Let's say there's a new person who comes in and they say, could you tell me the first two or three books I should read um, in theosophy? What would you say to them? Well, I, I would try to see what this person is interested in. Uh, if, if that person is, uh, has an intellectual you know, curiosity or is interested in something more, more practical, uh, I remember that, that the first meeting that I went uh, in the TS, a, a large meeting, they mentioned the secret doctrine. And I said, I want to read that. And all, mm, all the members said, oh, no, no, that's a, too a difficult <laughs> book. Just read this. And they gave me at the feet of okay. the master. Oh, okay. I read that and I said, I learned this in church. I couldn't see the value of <laughs> at the feet of the master. I wanted mm. something that was uh, metaphysically rich. Yeah. Uh, years later, I could approach at the feet of the master ah. from a different perspective, and I, I really like that book now. But at that time, it wasn't the right thing to do. So it's always tricky. I, uh, if the person says, "I just want to learn what some theosophical concepts," I would recommend books probably by Annie Besant, for example, because she is more approachable than than Lavatsky or or the Mahatma Letters. Or if even that seem a little too technical, I would try to suggest first some basic course, you know, John Algios okay. or uh, L. Woods Theosophy, or um, we have se several, Ed Abdil's The Secret Way and Gateway. Uh, but if the person is really interested in, in philosophy, you see that, that he has certain or she has certain background, I would say, okay, deal with the secret doctrine and see what you get from it. At least a person will see there is something in theosophy that is, you know, it's not com common. And the book that you just finished writing or just published, what was the, what's the name of it and the topic? Yeah, it was in Spanish mm -hmm. and it's the seven dimensions of the self. And the idea is, it's about this theosophical concept that we human beings are multi-dimensional um, beings. We have our physical body, but we have also an emotional nature, mental nature, a spiritual aspect, uh, what is technically called uh, the seven principles of man. And uh, so I explained one by one and I gave two or three exercises with each principle to harmonize that particular aspect of a human being and to develop the, the higher aspect of it. So there, is, there are some exercises for this physical body, uh, for uh, the energetic level, then for emotions, mind, for our intuition. And you're, um, I'm jumping around a little bit, but of course you're from Argentina and, and, and your first language is Spanish. Mm -hmm. You wrote this book in Spanish. Mm -hmm. A lot of the articles you write, though, are in English. Yeah, most um, of them. So, um, a little bit, could you talk about the difference between um, exploring, like when you think about theosophy, do you think, this is a dumb question, do you think about it in Spanish or do you think about it in English or both? It depends on the context. If I'm, if I'm thinking about something that I'm doing for uh, Argentina, for example, or for somebody in Spanish, I think in Spanish. But when I think about theosophy here with the projects that I have here, I, I think in English. Are the, are the insights any different? I mean, I mean, can you go to like the Spanish gear and you get different insights? No, I don't no, think because so. So, so, there really, so the language really is limited in how far it can take you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, both languages, I guess any language is, uh, is limited. So if you can get a grasp a little behind the words, uh, it doesn't matter what language. Maybe at the beginning, you know, the way you approach, since we always, uh, usually we start at a conceptual level, then maybe the way you approach something at the beginning depends a little on the language. And for that, I, I see some limitations in Spanish that the English doesn't have and some limitations in English, you know, that. Spanish doesn't have. But after you pass that first stage of merely concepts, you know, you, it's, it's the same. Although I, I always, even in, in Argentina, I tried to read the books in English simply because those, that, that was the language in which the books were written. If you read a book in Spanish, then you went through the translator's interpretation. You know, you have a word that can be expressed 
by two or three words, usually, synonyms. And they may have a different flavor. So uh, I, I try to read the books in the original language as far as I can. So you're um, writing books and writing articles. And then kind of at an everyday level, you do a lot of teaching here. You want to talk a little bit more about some things that you do here at the center, uh, the uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, well, I work here at, uh, at the library and also in the education department. And now we have this project with the Theosophical Wikipedia that we are creating. So uh, right now I'm working quite a bit on it. We, we want to have it more or less ready in a, in a few months. So I'm creating articles on all the different theosophical uh, terms that are used in our in our literature and then yeah I help in in with some study groups here the our theosophical branch and uh, and then different activities and also from time to time I go and give some talks outside either in different cities in the US or or in some other countries. And now the question for which we offer a prize. Mm -hmm. um, what does theosophy mean to you? To me, theosophy is a way of challenging my views and trying to reach a truer view than the one I had. So usually uh, I think all our views are, are not really true. Are, are true from a certain point of view, but we, there is a deeper view that allows you to relate to the world in, in, a, in a better way, to the world, to yourself. So to me, theosophy is this constant questioning your, your current view and trying to discover a higher view. And then um, for the uh, entire society, um, uh, what would you like to see for the Theosophical Society as a whole <clears throat> in the future, in the near future? I think uh, we need to let people know ab about the value of Theosophy in itself. You know, um, I personally, I don't only study Theosophy, I, I like very much Buddhism, especially Tibetan Buddhism. I like, in Hinduism, I like uh, Raja Yoga and Vedanta. I like also Neoplatonism. So I know to a certain extent all these philosophies also, and I use in my daily life many elements from these philosophies. So I don't think theosophy is the only one, you know, or, yeah. but as any philosophy, it has a, a particular uh, entity, so to say, that is different from all the rest. So. To me, theosophy has a very, very appealing nature that we should let the, the public uh, know about it. For those who are appealed by that, you know, I, I like all these philosophies, but I couldn't be a Buddhist or a Vedantin or, you know, because that is a particular approach that has its own limitations. In the TS, I feel that I can uh, break through those limitations. Some people are okay, they want to get a system and they are okay with the limitations of the system. So it's a lack of a, of a prescribed system that you find most helpful? Yeah, yeah. for example, suppose that in the TS we had a, you know, a dogma. Yeah. So if they would tell me, you can only study Blavatsky and the masters, and uh, I wouldn't be comfortable because I like Krishnamurti. Now, if I were studying Krishnamurti and they would tell me, you, you cannot study, you know, Blavatsky or Besan, you have to study Krishnamurti, I couldn't be there because I like the other also. So in, in the TS, you can take the different approaches that are vital for you and not be limited from outside. Um, so for the f future, you kind of like to see, um, uh, definitely uh, for the society to keep open-mindedness invite various viewpoints but then I know too that you're that you think it's important that people learn the theosophical classics mm -hmm. and that we don't get too far from that as a society yeah right? yeah it's so 
I think what we always have to find is the, the point of balance. Yeah. For example, in Argentina, there is a very strong emphasis on the theosophical teachings and very little emphasis on other traditions. What most people know about other traditions is what they read through the theosophical books. Most members have not read any book that belongs to their yeah. to that tradition in yeah. particular. Here there is a tendency uh, to go to the other uh, point. Uh, uh, people know about Buddhism, they know about yoga or Vedanta or whatever philosophy, Western philosophies, and uh, in the TS, but many times they don't know about theosophy. So uh, to me, in that way, you lose something that is unique in theosophy. So at this point, I think we have to encourage people uh, knowing theosophy. If at some point we are doing too much of that and we are, you know, l forgetting the idea of comparative study, mm -hmm. then we should emphasize yeah. the comparative study. You no, know, so that we can come to this point of balance. So and and studying and teaching theosophy, it brings you great joy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I know that was a silly way to phrase yeah. it, but it really no, does. No, 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 yeah. yeah. It really spi inspires me. So a little plug here. Um, uh, to see this great joy in action, and uh, Pablo's scientific mind, I can vouch, is very helpful in explaining some of these incredibly abstract topics in theosophy. Very, he makes it very graspable. And to see this in action, we have a webinar um, that is open to any TS member. You just email us uh, for your password. And we do this at 7 o'clock central time every Wednesday night central time here in America uh, 7 o'clock webinar from 7 to 8 and uh, Pablo uh, takes us through various concepts and um, movements within the Theosophical Society so Pablo thank you for your time he's a great thank teacher um, he leads by example so thank you Pablo thank you